What, what are the sort of, I mean, there must be some wonderful comforts that now come along with the world tour, aren't there? Things well, if really it, I like it when it's well organised, mm -hmm. you know, so if it's well organised and there's less pressure for you to, to worry about except the soundtrack and the show, then it's, mm -hmm. it works, works pretty well. You know, and then spacing of time between mm -hmm. uh, travelling. Do you find that you encounter a different sort of fan now? I mean, there are obviously three generations probably. Yes. Yeah. What, what are they like? What are the people? Sort of oh, people it's wonderful. Like? I mean, yeah. you get uh, you get um, a lot of young people, people our age, generation. Uh, and a lot of young kids that uh, climb on board and start listening to our music and mm. uh, and seem to appreciate it. And uh, uh, that's just fantastic. I mean, if you're fortunate enough in in, uh, in pop music to reach that stage where you have all these different ages, then isn't that what it's about? Mm. It's about longevity, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, all pop artists want to have a really long career. You and know? very few do, in fact. And very few are fortunate enough to have that. And, and our music, when we when we write songs or do an album, we don't aim for any one particular audience. We aim to try and, which is anyone who's listening. Anyone who's listening, you know, everybody. We try to see if they like it, you know. Yeah. But we please ourselves first, and hope everybody else likes it. But we don't aim just for one market. Now you mentioned that one, during one of those lows, which is I think mm -hmm. early in the 70s, mm -hmm. you decided to split up mm -hmm. and then obviously you came well, back Well, we didn't sort of decide to split no, up, just we just split up. <laughs> yeah, we thought of what happened. It doesn't really work that way. You didn't you know. sit around Let's the table and negotiate the, the settlement. I know. <laughs> right, yeah. I think well, what happened was we, we ran out of steam. Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't a question of splitting yeah. up, we just didn't get together. Mm. And we weren't getting on very well. But Barry, you were still, I mean, you were still writing songs for other people, and there were some fantastic hits during the 80s. Oh, but yeah, we that, was, we, that was later, later on. on yeah. yeah, but we yeah, wrote, but those we songs we wrote together. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, those we, songs we wrote together, we didn't, we didn't split up when we, we did those. No. no, that's when we decided to go, well, but Barbara was offered. Yeah. So that started a role of us expanding in production and writing, and particularly Barry's case with the production. So we all started writing the albums that, of the artist that uh, whoever Barry was producing at the time. What do you think, in terms of the artists you've worked with, has been perhaps closest to what you wanted the songs to achieve? I think Barbara Streisand is the mm. perfect example. Mm. I, I, she did the songs the way we wanted, we really wanted to hear her sing them. Uh, she interpreted them beautifully. From and, the gut, from the heart. Really. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, she just really learned them, and and uh, and she was open for direction, and um, we agreed to be we agreed to be critical mm. of each other. As, as, a, as, as entities, as people. And if she didn't like something, she would say so, and if I didn't like something, I would say so. And it's sort of, um, she's, she's a total pro. Uh, what would you identify as each other's strengths? Well, I think Morris is, is a, mm. a very good uh, keyboard player, interpreter. Um, and he knows one language. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, Morris, if he comes up, he, he, can be, he can be playing uh, just to himself. Mm. and. But he, he might come up with a melody without realizing he's done it, and the melody will go by, and Robin and me will go, "What did you just play then?" You know, and, and Morris will forget, and then we'll hit him. <laughs> <laughs> I shall play the tape because we always have yeah. a dat running. A, a right. tape is we always force going. Him to go back. So and just play back the tape for about fifteen minutes ago, right. and then we'll have what we and have. We might find a melody there that's really priceless. You know, I'm but great at forcing them to do what they don't want to do. <laughs> you need to do what you want to stick. Robin's yeah. a great listener yeah. and um, observer. Yeah. 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 And what about, I mean, the future, the ambition, that there can't be any... You've had every single award. You're now in the Hall of Fame. You've had Lifetime mm. Awards, yeah. endless Grammys. Are there any real ambitions left to fulfil? More Grammys. Um, <laughs> sorry, I think, um, I, 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 think, I think deep down we would like to be honoured with an Oscar. For well, I think we'd, movie. we'd love to be nominated. Nice. We'd like to be nominated. I mean, you know, everybody would like well, to say, I'd like to win an Oscar, but, you know... We'll well, nominate would be great. We have so much humility. <laughs> we just want to be nominated, God damn it. Um, so, uh, so Saturday night, the film Saturday Night Fever didn't put you off writing for... for well, no, in those oh, days, popular music well, wasn't why, incredible. Why was it, why it, it was incredible as, uh, as Oscar material in those days. But it did open the door, Fever. Mm. Because after that, I think Nashville got an Oscar. Uh, what a feeling from Flashdance got, a, got a, uh, an Oscar. Yeah. So yeah. it opened the door and made people sit up and go, hey, hang on a minute. Even though it was the biggest oh, yeah, selling yeah. soundtrack in history About at the time. Turn. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hold on a minute. So. No, we're not going to give him one. <laughs> <laughs> we lucked out, but everybody else, you know, they got recognised. It's funny because it's it's true that there is always something there that must motivate you beyond mm. your, oh, yeah. your, your your own yeah. talent. I would say that's yeah. the greatest motive. I think it's just being approved of what we mm. do and uh, vindicating what we believe in is, is a great reward. We, we always feel like it's an enormous mountain and we're sort of at base camp 10, mm. you know, and we sort of want to be at the peak. You know. But you know it's a funny business because when we get to the peak, you want to go further. Yeah. Yeah. Because Never quite there's high another, yeah. Yeah. when you get to the peak, there's another mountain. You get to the other mountain. You've got to go to that valley to get to it. Even when you're on a peak, it. you don't ever feel that you're on a peak. No. Everyone else does knows you are, mm. but you don't get the feeling. You still you've got somewhere to go. 
the feeling is that you still want to keep going. So I, I suspect that in life, that's what it's always going to be like, mm -hmm. that you still feel you want to go somewhere. I always have this vision of us, the peak of the, the, peak of the mountain, and just these fingernails, sort of <laughs> three sets of fingernails, and just our eyes. Sort of. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> I think it's a, lot, it's a lot more than that. Despite maybe slight variances and stylistic changes in the music, it's the voices, really, mm. that you seem to have managed to create something quite different from anybody else. Mm. That's Which is very fortunate to have a, a recognisable sound. And anybody yeah. who is successful, you can hear their voice and you know right away who it is, yeah. without, without even looking at the single or the mm. CD or whatever. So when you have, if you're fortunate to have that recognisable sound yet, then, mm. and people like it, and being brothers too, it's something that we've just been doing since we were kids. Yeah. You know. And were you glad that when the lampooning came with the, the fever mm -hmm. uh, era, that was more to do with style and the, the clothes? Yeah. And well, the, the you had color. to wear that stuff to be fashionable because yeah. that was a fashion. Because I read somewhere that you were actually dressed like that. You never chose those outfits in the first place. No, we never wore them. No. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean they, pin, they, they drew them on? Well, uh, it's like <laughs> yeah. we did one photo session for the whites with, with the white outfits on, yeah. the fever album one. with Vice mm -hmm. Cavulo. But they weren't white yeah. suits, they were white boiler outfits, like yeah. ABBA. Yeah. yeah. I, the mine was a short white jacket, which I already owned, and a pair of white pants. And you just took it off and wore the shirt, though, didn't you? Just no, it was, a white, it was a white jacket, I, I think. But um, it was really John's uh, suit that everybody was copying. But having yeah, said that, we were never active in the promotion of Saturday Night Fever. There were no videos. Mm. There was no films. We couldn't do videos in those days. Well, we did videos, yeah. but they weren't really called. There was no outlet. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was a fantastic time, you know. Yeah. The mean, excitement yeah. must have been. I mean, it was a fa it was fantastic uh, for everybody involved, mm. and that was just the way it was. And you know, you move on from that. Mm. And um, uh, we're always stunned that people still think of us in, in white suits. Mm. You know, um, some well, people, not all people, of course. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, everybody moves on. I mean, John Travolta is extremely proud of, the, of what that did for well, his you career. Think you think he know. went through a bad patch? Oh, yes. he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, he was and, very and, uncool yeah. at one point. And yeah. Right. So we all became uncool for for, mm. uh, for a little while, and um, but you know you've got to do, our philosophy is you've got to t you've got to take the cracks on the head with the slaps on the back, you know, mm. and uh, in this in, in a in a career that's lasted this long, you expect that. Oh yes. Yeah. And is there anyone that you, three of you would like to collaborate with? We'd love to work with Paul McCartney. Yeah. We'd love to work with Elton John. We love Phil Collins. Babyface. We like Babyface. We'd like to work with him. And I gather you're going to be working with Michael Jackson. Uh, yes, Michael, of course. Yes. He's a great friend. Yes. yes. Yeah. Now, what, what's that going to Well, we do? were talking in Cleveland that uh, he would like to do an album with us. No, uh, a single, I think. Or, well, either yeah, one. A I, song. I thought he was talking yeah. about. Okay. Which you'll write or he'll write? Okay. We'll write, write together. together. Write together, yeah. He'd like to collaborate with us on something. Yeah. Then you could take the whole, sort of join up your tours, world, world tours, could you? <laughs> well, he said, some, he said something about that when I said, look at <laughs> <laughs> No, Michael. Okay. He always does that. He always gets his fingers stuck. So there is talk. What did he say? <laughs> He's lost his blue cap again. Fifth time this week. <laughs> he said, um... <laughs> he said, look. Last time he did it with a large bottle, it was awful. <laughs> yeah, it took him two days to get that one off. It was an interview, it flew in, it flew in their face, you know. Mm. It was Melvin Bragg, wasn't it? You know, it place happens. Happens. You still haven't told me what he said. Who? He said, you know, he said, it would be great if we all went on tour together. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, we agreed. Yeah. But I couldn't imagine four 30 foot statues going down the Thames. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that might have been nice. Well, she's nice. Mm. Yeah. It's a different mm. way of promoting an album. I mean, we were in there in the other room <laughs> with George Martin two days ago, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, talking about the whole philosophy of music. And there's a special series he's doing called The Rhythm of Life. I know. He was following me in the car going home. And I just saw him in the mirror, mirror and I thought, there's the man who did all the records that I loved. Yeah. And I still kind of, I find it uh, quite a feeling meeting him. We again. were talking to and our we're teacher. Friends, you know. We were talking to our teacher. That's this is the man that did every record that I've ever loved. Yeah. Well, you're still very humble despite this enormous Gosh, fame. And it's, no. been... <laughs> it's the bottle. <laughs> it's the bottle. It's the yeah. Thank you very much enjoy, and for joining us on VIP and good luck with it. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Keep going, will you? Oh, right. I will. Katrina, no oh, sign the of the hairy chests and medallions and white suits. No, they're long gone. They're long gone, I'm afraid. But for those who are ardent Saturday night people,